The Bizarre Death of Chris Benoit. Hey guys, it's going to do I'm back with another video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the whole death and murders surrounding Chris Benoit. Over three days from the 22nd to the 24th of June in 2007, Canadian professional wrestler Chris Benoit murdered his wife Nancy, son Daniel, and then eventually himself. This was a double murder suicide. After failing to arrive at a WWE show on the 25th of June, police were alerted and asked to check on the home of Benoit by worried colleagues. Inside, they discovered a harrowing scene. Based on evidence, police reports and autopsies, it is believed that on Friday the 22nd of June, Chris killed Nancy in the upstairs bedroom. She was found with her limbs bound and her body wrapped in a towel. There was a Bible left next to her body and injuries indicated that Chris Benoit pressed his knee into her back was pulling on a cord that was wrapped around her throat. According to the officials working on the case, there was no sign of a struggle. However, they were unable to determine for sure due to the decomposition that had taken place. Now, according to reports, it is believed that the following day, Chris killed their son, Daniel. Daniel was seven years old and he was believed to be suffocated in his bedroom. A Bible was also left by his side. The coroner report concluded that Daniel had Xanax in his body, implying that he was unconscious when he was killed. When the bodies were discovered, Daniel's body had begun to show decomposition, but not to the extent that his mother's had, which is why they came to the conclusion that he had died the following day. However, it does lead you to ask questions like or well, was he in the house for a whole day whilst his mother lay dead now later on june the 23rd around 3 30 p.m chris benoit sent a voicemail to a friend this was chavo guerrero now this stated that both daniel and nancy were suffering from food poisoning which is why he would be late to the wwe house show guerrero worried called chris back and he recalls him sounding groggy tired and a bit strange. After this call ended, Guerrero was concerned. It just didn't seem right, it seemed off. So 12 minutes later, he tried to call Chris back and it went through to voicemail. So he left him a voicemail asking him to call him back as soon as he could. Now, Chris did eventually call him back and he said that he took so long to call back because he was actually on the phone to Delta Airlines trying to adjust his flights so he could get to the show. He ended the call by saying he was having a very stressful day because of Daniel and Nancy's illness. Chavo told Benoit that, you know, okay, I'm here for you if you need to talk to me, in which Benoit replied, Chavo, I love you. Now, this was not, not in Chris's character, you know. It, it took Chavo by surprise that he would tell him that, which made him think even more that something wasn't quite right. Later on that very same day, another co-worker of Benoit reported that he had called and said that Nancy and Daniel were both vomiting. Nancy vomiting blood. Benoit failed to show up to the house that he agreed to be at that day and he left a voicemail on Chavo's phone saying that he would be in the following morning. Chavo agreed to come and pick him up. The next day, Sunday, June the 24th, five text messages were sent in a 10 minute period in the early hours between 3.51 and 3.58. This was from both Chris and Nancy's mobile phones. Four of these texts were simply Benoit's address. The fifth message said that the family dogs were enclosed in the pool area. Very odd thing to say. Also noted that the garage door had been left open. Two of the known recipients of these text messages were Chavo Guerrero and WWE referee Scott Armstrong. Now, Chavo was actually awoken by these text messages, but he just read them, went back to sleep because he thought, I've got to be up in a couple of hours to go get this guy from the airport. So it's no issue. But Chris never arrived at the airport. Once again, Benoit made a phone call, this time to WWE Talent Relations Office, saying that his son had been vomiting blood and that he and Nancy were at the hospital with him, which is why he never made the flight. But he said, it's okay, I'm gonna get a later flight and I will be there at the event tonight. He never turned up. According to the district attorney and city sheriff, Chris Benoit committed suicide 
by hanging. Benoit is said to have used the cord of a pull-down weight machine to hang himself, creating a noose from the cord's end, releasing the weight and being strangled by the resulting motion. According to a district attorney, Benoit was found hanging by the pulley cable. In 2016, on the Talk is Jericho podcast, Benoit's sister, Sandra Toffoloni revealed that over the weekend Benoit's browser history included the quickest and easiest way to break a neck and that he had used a towel around his neck attached to the handle of the machine and not the machine's cord as previously mentioned. She also claims that he used a very heavy weight on the machine and that his neck was broken instantly. In the early hours of the afternoon on June 25th, WWE officials and wrestlers began to worry about Chris Benoit's whereabouts. They'd not heard from Benoit in over 24 hours at this point. And after being shown the text that Armstrong and Guerrero received, they decided to contact the police. So they went and checked on Benoit's home, discovered the three bodies, and informed the WWE at 4.15 p.m. what they had found. It was initially reported that a suicide note had not been found. However, later on, Benoit's father stated that Chris had written a handwritten note in one of the Bibles in his possession. This was discovered in the personal items sent to his first wife and two children in Canada. And this is when the note was discovered. As for potential motives for the act, WWE's attorney gave a statement in which it stated that Benoit had been prescribed testosterone as part of a testosterone replacement therapy. It's a common treatment for those that had previously used steroids, and apparently he was suffering from testicular damage as a result of this. Another former wrestler believed that Chris Benoit may have been suffering from repeated, untreated trauma to the brain and concussions. This could have left him in an unstable mental state. Later, tests were done on Chris Benoit's brain. This was taking place at the West Virginia University and they found that his brain was so badly damaged that it resembled the brain of an 85-year-old Alzheimer's patient. That is a lot of damage and with further studies revealing that his brain had actually suffered from CTE which is severe chronic traumatic encephalopathy with serious damage to all four lobes and the stem. Brain damage is something that Benoit's father claims was responsible for his actions. Apparently Nancy did file for divorce in 2003, four years before the murder took place, with claims of alleged domestic abuse suffered from Chris, but she did withdraw the filing just three months later. It's also believed that Benoit became heavily depressed Chris's best friend and fellow wrestler, Eddie Guerrero, had passed recently, and just a week before this incident took place, another one of his close friends had died. It was revealed after Chris Benoit's death that he would regularly converse with Eddie Guerrero in his diary. And close friends of Benoit claims that Eddie's death may have played a big part in his own suicide. Strangely, a statement regarding the death of Nancy Benoit was added to Chris Benoit's Wikipedia article 14 hours before the police had discovered the bodies of Benoit and his family. The article on the wiki page was changed to say Chris Benoit was replaced by Johnny Nitro for the ECW World Championship match at Vengeance as Benoit was not there due to the personal issues stemming from the death of his wife Nancy, which was added at 4.01 a.m. on the 25th of June, whereas the Fayette County Police had not discovered the bodies until 2.30 p.m. Police seized the computer of the man who had made the edit, but eventually released him and declined to press charges, as this was put down to being simply a huge coincidence and nothing more. And I know that this has stemmed a lot of conspiracy theories, something that I could go into on another video if you would like me to, please let me know down below, as to perhaps this not being as clear cut as it first seemed. After Benoit's death, WWE replaced the planned Monday show with a tribute to Chris Benoit, but they were not aware of the events surrounding the other deaths. However, once they discovered what actually happened in the police reports, the following show, Vince gave the following statement. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Last night on Monday Night Raw, the WWE presented a special tribute show, recognizing the career of Chris Benoit. However, now some 26 hours later, the facts of this horrific tragedy are now apparent. Therefore, other than my comments, there will be no mention of Mr. Benoit's name tonight. On the contrary, tonight's show will be dedicated to everyone who has been affected by this terrible incident. This evening marks the first step of the healing process. Tonight, WWE performers will do what they do better than anyone else in the world, entertain you. So there we go, guys. That is 
the case of Chris Benoit. As I said, on the internet, there are lots of theories going around, which I can delve into. If you would like me to, please do let me know. Also, I want to give a massive thank you to Scott Evans of Tepis Paranormal. I will link his channel down below, who scripted this video today. He came to me a few weeks ago and said, I think you should do a video on the Chris Benoit case. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I went back to him a few days ago and I was like, you know, what do you know about this case kind of thing? And, and he came back with a full script, which was amazing. Thank you so much, Scott, for helping me with this video. Guys, go check out his channel. He does amazing paranormal investigations and lots of paranormal stuff on his channel. Thank you for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any cases that you want me to cover, please let me know down below, or you can email me at ddryan at gmail.com. Thank you, guys. We'll see you very soon. Sweet one. Geese.